Before we get started, anyone interested in ordering Mr. Lindell's four CD set, go to metaphysicalarttheater.com. For those in the U.S., you can order physical copies or the digital downloads. For those outside the U.S., you can order the digital downloads by going to metaphysicalarttheater.com. How you doing, sir? Oh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? It's fine. Well, what's up today? Well, today we want to talk about revisioning. I know a lot of people have questions about revising uh, their day, uh, an event, whatever. So we want to talk about uh, revising. Uh, what are your thoughts as we initially begin talking about revising? Well, actually, uh, hear this. Jesus is teaching the importance of choose this day. You're operating the power of choice given by God. There's only one power. There's nothing to run from or to run to because I'm with you always, God claims. This now is so. You turn to me, I'll turn to you. New life for the asking. So why aren't you asking? <laughs> That's the question. That is the question. You know, I know I was thinking about the scripture that says, though your sins be scarlet, you know, I'll forgive you and they'll be as white as snow and I'll remember your sins no more. Is that the art of revision? That, that is the art of revision. That's right. That's what it is. And, and look, you're playing with your mind when you're just sitting, doing nothing, and thinking about all kinds of sort of things without any, any reference to, to, to directing your inner conversations because that's what you're dealing with. That's your everydayness. That's what you're experiencing day after day after day, what you're thinking, feelingly about. So if you're not going to change it, then you can expect just exactly what you are expecting right now, this day. And you're told to choose this day, and you're given to do so by God. Choose this day. And if the, why aren't you choosing better than the best? Because it, God told you to choose. And whatsoever is is the potential of your asking, believing, receiving, and and that's the story, isn't it? It is. You know, and you said, you know, we're given to change or also choose. And that's simply what we're talking about when we're talking about revising. When we talk about revising, we're simply, you said, you know, playing a game with your mind. As we begin utilizing our mind and begin changing what it is that we're giving our attention to, or even changing what we perceive about past events, that's revising, correct? Yes, yes. And, and actually, you are changing your mind every day, every moment, really. But it's the idea is to know what you're changing to. Don't, don't be concerned about what you're changing from. What are you changing to? Because that's what you're going to be experiencing what you're saying to yourself, what you're suggesting to yourself, that is your life of experiencing day in and day out. And you're given, thinking ahead of your evidence of experiencing, you have a choice to choose this day differently than you did yesterday. Because you're, it's always this day, and this is the day you're told to choose, and actually, this is the very hour because it's always now, isn't it? It is. It is. And I like how you made it practical. You know, said that we're always choosing. And I think that far too often we get so much into our head and we start thinking, you know, techniques and all this other stuff, but simply choose. Yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> That's how I heard it. And I tell you what, that was good advice <laughs> because uh, I, I would confuse everything and I, I, I'd, I'd analyze everything to dust. 
It couldn't sit still. I could sit quiet, but I couldn't sit still because the mind's whirling away in there with all kinds of thoughts, and they're not directed. And if they're not directed, then you don't know what to expect. And what you expect is what you get. Isn't that so? That's absolutely so. And that's a thing that many people miss. You know, they, like I said, they get into all these techniques and so forth, but they're still not even expecting the desired outcome. They talk about it. They call themselves meditating on it. But you often say it, what you expect is what you get, not necessarily that's what you want. No, that, that, that's it. The, whole, the, the fact is, is that if you go there wanting, you see, that's what you're there for is to get rid of your wanting. I mean, you must have an idea of what you do want. So claim it. And that's what you do. You claim it. You show up and you claim your inheritance. Isn't that what it is? It is. You know, I like that you said claim it because you're claiming it by way of your thoughts. So whatever it is that you're giving your attention to, that's your claim to fame. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's yours. You own it because you're thinking feelingly about it, and that makes it yours. What are you thinking feelingly about? Do you want more of it? If you don't, then change it. <laughs> so, that, it, you know, it's, it's really simple. If you just keep it simple and, re, and reiterate it over and over in your mind until you can actually remember to do so, because that, that, that man's great failing is he's got a poor memory. And I, I know I have to write things down or I'll, I'll forget it or post a sticky something somewhere with a note on it. <laughs> And even then, I'll Paul walk by it without seeing it. <laughs> so that, that's everybody's problem, isn't it? It is. You know, and you spoke of a poor memory. And I think that sometimes a poor memory can be beneficial if you're forgetting about the negative, if you're forgetting about those things you don't desire, if you're forgetting about lack, loss, and limitation, if you're forgetting about your poor health, if you're forgetting about the times that you were broke or you were outside of a relationship, those are great times to have poor memories. Yes, yes. You know, if, if you had asked someone, as a matter of fact, I, I did that an awful lot, I'd ask people, uh, what 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 is your what is your main? Do you have a main goal, a, a, a dream that that you're working toward? And actually, what you, you you can tell right away they don't know by the answer you get. But they may say something, and and it's just off the top of their head to an, to answer a question. But your attitudes. And that, that, that's what is claimed by all the great minds down through the centuries, that it is man is his attitude. That, that's what he's doing. That's how he's dressing his world. You're thinking ahead of your evidence. So change the thinking ahead of your evidence, and you'll be experiencing something different. Isn't that so? It is. And, again, we call that change to revise what it is that you're thinking about. You said that, listen, most people, you ask them, do they have a goal? And then all of a sudden, you can see them kind of processing in their head, trying to figure out what their goal is. And that's absolutely correct. Most people haven't made a decision. Now, they know all the things they don't want, but they haven't decided on what it is they do want. That's why they got them. <laughs> Those things they don't want, that's why they got them, because it has their attention. <laughs> That's, that's a story, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You know what? And it's as simple as that story is, I even want to repeat it so that those who may have missed it. Mr. Little just stated the reason why you have the problems is because that's what you've been giving your attention to. Many of us are so frustrated and we keep wondering how can we get rid of, let's say, the problems. Simply change your thoughts, change your mind, change your world. Now, I say simply, it's not easy for most of us because we've been so preconditioned 
to that way of thinking that for some of us it almost seems impossible. Yeah, I know. And then they'll get notices in the mail. And then you read those notices that, you know, send it today, write it today. And, and then that sets you off into a frustration again. Understand, you have rights too. And, and you can depend upon those rights that you have. But you must activate them. You, you, have, you have authority because you have dominion. If, do you know what dominion means? It means you're the one in charge. You're the one doing the choosing. And you're experiencing what you're choosing. And if you don't like what you're experiencing, change your choosing. <laughs> it's, that's just another way of saying it, isn't it? It is. You know, you spoke about notices in the mail, and I want to speak to that because I know there's some people that are experiencing challenges. I was talking to a gentleman uh, sometime back, and he was dealing with battling with cancer and so forth. And he had received a bill, a notice, uh, that was like 10 years old. And this collector started harassing him. And he started getting to this upset. You know, his uh, person, his aide had to come to help him out and so forth because he was focusing on the exterior, the, the bill collector, this uh, agent that was hired to collect money. And I told him, I said, listen, if you don't have the money, what can they do? And he said, well, they can put liens on my house. He said, but there's already a lien on my house. I said, so there's really nothing they can do to you. And that's what I want you as creators to understand. If people are threatening you, if they're coming at you, they're talking about garnishing yours, you do everything you can do. Then you release it because you know that you've done all that you know to do. And then leave the results up to God. Yeah, that's right. Jesus said so, too, didn't he? My father, one, even as you and I are one. In other words, I'm right here with you. I suffer with you. The decisions you make, but yet you don't behold me. I'm right here with you. Always. He says, I'm always with you. Where, where, where do you need to go to reach him if he's with you? It isn't... Isn't that the understanding that you're to take from the messages? It is. It is that he is with you and that know this, that no matter what the situation looks like, that it's going to work out towards and for your good. Well, he's on your side. Let him be. Yeah. Let him be on your side. You see, the thing of it is when he gave you choose this day, he cut himself off from aiding you beyond what you choose. Isn't that so? Absolutely, until we ask for his aid. That's right. He says you receive not because you ask not or you're asking amiss. So he didn't say you're not exactly asking, but you're asking for what you don't want rather than for what you do want, and they're not being it because that's what you're told all throughout the scriptures is be it now, right here, right now, be it. And you have the authority, you have the permission of God to do so. Why not do so? It cost you nothing but a thought of mind, and that you can do. Because <laughs> you're thinking all the time anyway, right? <laughs> you know what, and I want to add to that, you know, um, when I was an engineer for a very large telecommunication company, um, a lot of times I had to solve issues that were outside my privy. There was, I didn't have access. I didn't have access to certain equipment and so forth, but I knew that there was a solution. And so I began to work from the end of knowing that a solution was coming. So my peer would say, how are we going to fix this? And I said, I have no clue, but I knew that the problem was fixed. And so the right people at the right time would always come in and at the end, I was held a genius for simply trusting the divine within. That's it. That's it. Focus. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It is. Just, just focus. What are you focused on? Because that's what you're going to be experiencing. So if you don't want to keep experiencing it, well, then change your focus. Yeah. Because what has your attention has your life. Your life. 
You understand? In other words, you're letting ideas that you have not chosen guide you through through life. And, and you feel you're being denied, and you are, because all denial, we're told, is self-denial. <laughs> you got to work with it, right? You know what? And, you know, nobody thinks, I didn't think, that I was denying myself. There's no way in the world that if I didn't have it, there was no way in the world that I thought to myself, well, I don't have it because I'm denying myself. There were always forces outside of myself that I had to blame. But I it wasn't until I took responsibility that my life began to change. That's it. That's it. You have to take responsibility. And the only thing you have to take responsibility for is what you're talking to yourself about. Because that's going to be your experiencing until you change your mind, change your will. And that's what you're given to do. Why not give it a go? You're told, test me now here with. That's, that was from God. He's telling you, test me now here with and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't even have room to, to receive it all. Is that the things you're expecting? If it isn't, then get on track and expect it, right? I agree. You know what, and that's just so powerful uh, for us to grasp, you know, that God would pour us out a blessing so large that we would not even have room enough to receive it, and the only thing we have to do is ask. And the blessing comes in way of, you know, Dr. Joseph Murphy says, you know, uh, salvation, but it comes in the way of a solution, you know, an answer to a prayer, you know, somebody coming up to you and you were seeking something, and all of a sudden you come across something in a newspaper ad, whatever, and there's your solution, and that's the blessing. You know, people don't give themselves credit for what they do. Yeah. See, that that's the whole thing. They're, they're, they're not taking credit when they do something right, and so it all seems like it's dark. But the, you are the light of the world. It, and scripture is telling you, lighten up, be happy, be joyful. Isn't that lightening up? It is. You know, you said something. People don't take credit. And it's so true. I talk to people all the time, and they say, you know, this stuff is not working. Now, all the, as we call, so-called miracles that are happening throughout their day, you know, time after time, they overlook those because they're looking and waiting for the big lottery payoff. Now, all the other miracles they can find $100 on the street, and they say, nothing good ever happens for me. Yeah, well, it's a wonder anything really does then, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then they still wouldn't take credit for it. Yeah. But you see, you're told, blessed is the man that does not condemn himself for that which he has allowed. I mean, that's for everyone, every child born of woman. You're given salvation. What are you looking for? Salvation. And it's right with you if you'll just claim it. I am with you always. I will never leave you. I'm my presence. What, do you, what else do you need to know? I'm, that's the question, isn't it? It is. You know, you, you spoke of salvation, and like I said, I love the Dr. Joseph Murphy. You know, if it's a hamburger, it's your salvation. If you don't yeah. have, if you're not experiencing what you desire, revise and begin to change what it is that you're thinking about more loving and of a good report. Yeah, you know, the, the, the statement is very clear, only, the only on things lovely and of good report. See, it, see it, when you deviate from that and, and you see, if you're angry, you feel the angry. Yeah. The other person may not even know that you're angry at them, but you feel the angry. You feel the hurt. Why do that to yourself? Let it go. Let go and let God. Why not? I mean, you're looking for peace in your world. That's a good sign for it, isn't it? 
It is. You know, we spoke about uh, letting go. That's the revision. And you say, listen, if you're feeling angry, upset, discomfort, pain, let it go. You know, and the thing is, as I've often said, we're energy systems. Many people go around day after day holding on to anger, holding on to upset, and then they wonder why they're so often sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's all a virtual reality. If if you if you can even grasp a bit of that, it's all a virtual reality. It's made up of man's mind thinking, and that that is what you're experiencing. That's why I call everything on the without secondhand land, because it's only new as idea. And that's what you're looking at when you're looking out there. You're looking at other people's ideas. See, I didn't invent this stereo I'm looking at. Someone else had the idea. I'm experiencing the result of his idea. But what am I experiencing as a result of what I'm thinking? That's what's really important, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I hope that the listener will go back and listen to that again. And you said, listen, this is a virtual reality. Many people that are listening and watching these talks, they're into gaming. You guys should be like the prime people that understand this stuff. You create virtual reality. You create worlds on your smartphone, and you're playing in these worlds every day. Translate that over to your own life. And see how when you're on that game station and you're playing that game of how you can make those characters act by simply how you desire to make them go by way of your thoughts. Same thing is happening in your life. When you begin to change that, your world is going to change. Well, I can tell you this. If there's no change in your self-talk conversations, there's not going to be any change in your world that's going to be desirable but there will always be change. Yeah. This is a world of ideas, attitudes, and change. So you can expect change, but the idea is you were given to direct the change. If you would see to it what you're thinking feelingly about, because feeling is the secret. You may not even put it into words. It could be just a feeling that you're mm -hmm. feeling, but that is creative because you're doing it and you were given to do it and you're doing so. What are you doing? That's the question, isn't it? It is. And you say, listen, if you're not changing your self-talk and what it is that you're feeling about what it is that you're observing and that you're experiencing, then it's not going to change. And even if you have a temporary change, it's going to be just that. It's going to be very temporary because it's going to be unfamiliar to you, so you're going to go back to what you're comfortable with, your old way of thinking. Yeah. Then be still and know that I am God. With you always. will never leave you. Omnipresence. That's the story. If you'll feel after that very same thing, you'll find it because it's already yours. You're just claiming it. And that's the whole thing, is that you must claim it, constantly claim it. You don't need to see any physical results if you have asked, believing is receiving. And if you don't believe it, you won't receive it. But you're given to believe it if you'll only focus on it to see what's there offered. There's so, so much, well, there's so much more offered than we're taking advantage of because we're not on track to receive because we don't believe the very things we need to believe to make them so. And it is believing that makes it so. And you're given to believe whatsoever. And they're doing so. All you have to do is pick up the, new, the morning news and, there it is. It's what they're doing with their self-talk. They may not realize it. They may not understand it. But it is their own self-talk that they're dealing with 
good, bad, or indifferent. Isn't that so? It is so. I want to give an example. Uh, my wife was watching uh, TV the other day, and I was doing some work, getting ready for a course. And I heard her groan. And normally when that happens, she'll give me a call because we're in two different rooms. And she'll say, did you know what blah, blah, blah just happened? And so when I heard her groan, I called her. And I said, don't tell me what happened. I said, because whatever it is that happened, and she was watching the news, I said, I'll find out tomorrow. I said, but what I don't want to do is to go to sleep with that. I said, because what's going to happen is it's going to resonate in my spirit, and I just don't want it. We have to be mindful and guards at our mind's gate of what we're allowing into our mind's gate. Absolutely. You're either setting yourself up or setting yourself free. That's what you're doing constantly. You're setting yourself up or you're setting yourself free. Now you look at your life up to this moment and see what you're doing because it is you doing it, believe me, because God gave you choice to choose. And when he gave you choice to choose, he took himself off that is responsible for you. And it, you, the, he tells you that they themselves are makers of themselves. So no, you got nobody else to blame. And if you, you're blaming them, then you're denying yourself understanding the truth that it's you who is choosing. And understand you are choosing because you're praying ceaselessly. You understand that? You're asking, you're actually asking ceaselessly. <laughs> that, that are scare you right there because that's what this is. This is the hell. That's what the people are facing because that's what they're seeing is the hell. And then they're wondering why. Because they're thinking it. That's why. They're feeling it. That's why. Because they're operating from the power and it, 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 it's choice. You have choice. Choose better than the best. Isn't that the way you do it? Yeah. You know, you say that they're operating from the power, but of course they're operating from the power amidst. And because of that, then like you said, they're experiencing hell. But each one of us is given to choose heaven on earth. Yes, what are you told to bring heaven on earth? If, they're to, if you're told to bring heaven on earth by God himself, why not? Why not do so? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you've got an excuse, but is it good, a good excuse? I mean, is there such a thing? If God told you to do it, then it's a done deal. If you don't believe God's promises to you, and he did make many promises throughout the scriptures to you. Are you listening? That's the point. Are you really listening? If you're not listening to yourself, then you certainly aren't listening to God. Isn't that so? It is so. You know, and some of you would say, well, uh, Mr. Lindo, uh, Coach Carlo, how do I bring heaven on earth? We've been talking about it this whole broadcast. Change your mind. Change your world. That's how you bring heaven on earth. That's right. What, what else is there? Isn't that it? That's it. Yeah, well, if you just, just remember attitude awareness and imaginational control, if you get these two lined up and in order and in functioning in your favor, then you'll have the good life that you're looking for. If you don't, then you'll keep experiencing what you are experiencing, and you're told not to judge by appearances because if you judge by the appearances, you just keep repeating the same nonsense over and over and over and wondering why. Why? Because you keep putting it in operation with your thinking. Isn't that it? Yeah, absolutely. And you said something. You said, and we've talked about this, and I hope we gave a whole uh, hour to this, but attitude awareness and imaginational control, for those who are new, Hear what's being said. What is your attitude about whatever it is that you're processing at the given moment? And what is your imagine? So you got your attitude. Then you also, what are you imagining about this circumstance? So attitude awareness, be mindful of your attitude. And what are you imagining about 
this event because see, whatever you're imagining, that's what's real to you. Yeah. Yeah. You you have a choice. Just just keep telling yourself you have a choice because God said you had a choice. And if you have a choice, just choose better. W wouldn't that be simple? Should be. <laughs> it sounds like it should be pretty simple to follow. I mean, you know, he, yeah. he's looking out for all of us, even the real dummies, which I was, because I, I had no idea of what was being offered every day of my miserable life in the beginning. And, and, it, and it, it, it was because I, I thought everything had power over me in some form or another. And if you're not the one paying attention, that's true. If you're not paying attention to what you're paying attention to, then that's true. It's what you'll be experiencing. And you can, de you, you can deny yourself and deny yourself as long as you keep choosing the same thing, judging by appearances, because how can you change anything if you don't have a different idea? Because it, you're told that all the help you need is nearer than hands and feet. So it must be your thinking process, and that's exactly what it is. And what are you thinking about? That's all you need to know. What are you actually thinking about?